Everybody, we're at America Fest 2022. Shane Winnings is in the house. I love chatting with you because you have such a fascinating background. <laughs> you were involved in law enforcement. You were a law enforcement officer. And while we got this book of the law on the table, right. it's so fascinating to me that we have people coming out of a pandemic that freely were following tyrannical law. Right. But when it comes to following God's law, it's kind of like that Drake meme. Nah. Right. I don't want anything to do with that. Well, I think like, you know, the Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And what I saw people do over the last few years was throw out Romans 13. Hey, Romans 13, brother, Romans 13, got to obey the government. They want us to mask up and vax up like we have to do it. And it's like that was not written to just be a blanket statement, because if that was the case, then what is true justice? What is true law? I mean, look at other countries that have like dictatorships. Should you be obeying the, those guys? You know, look at the Nazi Germany, you know, when they were in charge, should we be following those guys if we were in their shoes? It's like there has to be a point where we use some common sense and we're led by the spirit to understand like, no, Romans 13 is written about a government that submits to a higher authority, which is God. It's the same thing as in a marriage, right? The husband is the leader of the household, but the woman doesn't blindly follow if he's not following God. Like she's not gonna sin against God because he's not following the Lord. And so I think the, the thing that led us into this spiral of where we're at now is people just going with the flow because it's the law and the big man on TV said to do it. And even ripping Bible verses out, out of context, not understanding the heart. And uh, we're truly being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And I would love for you to touch on a little bit of your background as a law enforcement officer and also answer the question of, don't people that normally follow the law or communities that follow the law and we have a sense of law and order, those communities, those societies and those cultures are just better off? Yeah, you would think like that would be common sense. Yeah. But cities like Minneapolis had to find that out the hard way. You know, the whole thing with George Floyd happened and what did they do? a knee-jerk reaction to defund the police and cut them out almost entirely. That's what they did. And what happened because of that? Months later, crime was skyrocketing, like violent crimes were skyrocketing, property crimes were up, all types of crimes were up, go figure, because they don't have any cops. And what did they do? They were begging for law and order to return. So what we see when people depart from just common sense, you know, is, is lawlessness is gonna run rampant. And uh, I saw that as a police officer, you know, I was, I was working south of Seattle for five years in a city called Federal Way. Um, so we were up there when Chaz and Chop and all that was happening. And I will tell you that- The autonomous zone. Right, yeah, you know, according to Governor Inslee though, like it, you know, it was news to him. He didn't know what was going on, but that's a whole other story. And that ties into how can you have law and order when you have leadership that wants to pretend that lawlessness is not running rampant? You know, when you have our, our country's leadership saying it was the summer of love, when people were rioting and burning down things and murdering people, that just goes to show you this stuff happens from the top down. And unfortunately, you know, as a street cop, I saw that because we might go arrest someone for doing bad things, but then we would have lawyers and prosecutors that worked for the state or for the county that did not want to press charges because oh, you know, it was their first time or we, we don't want to prosecute on things like that. So it's like you have these cops running around trying to do good, arresting bad guys. And then the prosecutors who work for the city or the county or the state don't want to press charges. So these guys are getting out of jail, back onto the street. And what happens when you think about a child, right? If a child disobeys, you threaten them with the punishment and you don't follow through and you let them off the hook they're gonna be emboldened. Yep. And so right now in our country, we have emboldened criminals. We have emboldened people who know that the law is not gonna do anything. And it's no wonder why we're in situations that we're in. And then now that you're going out and evangelizing in places across the country, and you're up there uh, on stage, preaching the word of God, how do you make sure that you're not now like a law enforcement officer for Christ and get right. stuck in this legalism? Totally. Well, you know, it's important to remember, um, you know, it says who, who has been forgiven much will forgive much. Who's been shown mercy will show mercy. And so I would be so wrong to stand up there and think that like, I've arrived. 
you know, hey, I'm the guy on stage. And so everybody listen to me and I'm the example. No, that's not it. I am like an usher. I think a lot of it has to do with its humility and it's recognizing the role that we play as Christians. I am an usher and I get to walk people into the presence of God, you know? And so when I view it like that, I'm never thinking like, oh, I'm here to bring the hammer. I'm here to spank people. I'm here to whatever. You know, that's not it. The Holy Spirit is the one who arrests hearts, you know? I just get to present the gospel and the Holy Spirit will bring the conviction of sin and righteousness. And so that's, that's what's amazing about what we get to do is we're talking to people, we're sharing the gospel, and it's just by what we say and the way we live our lives that will convict people. I, I don't need to go and tell someone all of the sins that they're in, unless they're in blindness or something. I can say, hey, like you're sinning. Did you know that? Like, let's talk about it. But, you know, as, as a preacher especially, our job is not to be like God's police. Yeah. That's not what we're here. And that especially goes for social media. And anyone on social media, you gotta know, like, you're not God's policeman. Um, he's been upholding his word for a long time without your help. And uh, let, let's not drive people away from the faith because we're walking around pointing out everyone's sin. Let's lead people to Christ and, and make sure we're standing firm on truth while we do it. I hope that makes sense. It's yeah. like, I'm not God's police officer for sure. And I'm glad that I'm not because I couldn't do it. Because I feel like you see both ends of the spectrum. You have some people that are almost like the religious leaders in the Bible now. Right. You know, like there's this ultimate legalism where it's like, you got to follow the law. And if you don't, um, I'm going to look morally or spiritually superior to you. And I love just pointing the finger. Mm -hmm. You got one point, uh, one pointed finger. You got a lot more back at you. That's right. And then the other side where you have some people that are supposed to be shepherding a flock and they're like, I don't know if I need to tell them about their sin. Right. Like, I don't know if I need to tell them about uh, God's law at all. They already know that they're sinful. It's like, no, you're called to do that. How do you, how do you find that happy medium? where you don't get too stuck in this legalism and you don't get to this place of, I'm not even gonna touch on sin at all. Totally. You know, I've heard this before, all word and you'll dry up, all spirit and you'll blow up, right? So we have people that are all law and you can tell they're, they're like dry as a bone, you know? It's like, dude, you're saying the stuff from the word, but when I hear you talk, like it doesn't feel like Jesus. It doesn't feel loving. But then you can have someone who is so charismatic, so free by the Spirit, and they're just flowing in the Spirit that it's like hyper grace. And Jesus came with grace and truth. And so we have to be ministers of that. And that's having a foundation of the Word and being led by the Holy Spirit. And so when I preach, I make sure like, dude, I am going to talk about sin and how we're not born inherently good like the world says we are. We're born enemies of God. That's Colossians 1.21. Yeah. But he loves us so much, Romans 5.8, that he showed that love by sending Jesus on the cross. So it's like, I have to tell people, the reason you have tension in your life is because you don't have peace with God if you're an unbeliever. And I lead them into truth, but I, I don't dwell on our sin. Sin is important and it's needed to paint the picture of why Jesus came. But then I begin to talk about our identity in Christ and, and why Jesus died and to set us free from the law so that our hearts would be filled with love because the Bible says, and Jesus said this, love does no harm to a neighbor. So if we wanna see this country fixed, we could implement every law under the sun, but if we don't change people's hearts, they're gonna keep harming their neighbor. They're gonna keep breaking all of the laws because we need a heart change in this country, not a, a change in the constitution. Final question then, because we know the law is something that was constantly thrown at, at Jesus. Oh yeah. Like, and he said, I didn't come to abolish that thing. Like, hey, religious leaders back in the day, I, I, I'm calling out wrongs, no doubt. Right. I didn't come to abolish this at all. There's, there's goodness and righteousness inside of that, but I came to fulfill it. Yes. How do you get people to focus on that aspect of Jesus that, you know, the ultimate freedom and the fulfillment of that law that we're supposed to uphold, uphold. Yeah. It's like through Jesus, that's where we find liberty. That's where we find freedom. That's where we find peace. That's where we find direction. That's where we find hope. Yeah. Well, I think it's important that, yeah, Jesus didn't, he didn't get rid of the law, but he, he revealed actually that God looks much deeper than just the law. And this was shown when, when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and it's that whole, you say, but I say, you know, and he goes, you say that adultery is this. I say, if you even look at a woman. So Jesus actually raises the bar to show this thing is impossible to meet. That's why we need Jesus, because he makes us righteous by his blood. 
And the Bible says that he gives us a new heart and a new mind. When we have that new heart, we begin to be fathered by God. We actually want to follow his law. Like David said in the Psalms, he said, I love your law. We actually, when you're walking with the Lord, you say, God, I don't want to be on the wide road of destruction. I don't want to sin. I want to be on the narrow path, like help me. And we need people who in this country desire God to keep them on the narrow path. Right now we have people doing what thou wilt, right? Doing whatever they want, living their own life, living their best life. And Charlie said it best at, um, at the Student Action Summit. He said, there are people that think they're free because they don't follow God, but they're bound by all of their decisions. You know, people that think they're free, but they're addicted to partying and drugs and alcohol and sex and all this stuff. That's not actual freedom, being able to do what you want. As a Christian, I don't want to do whatever I want. I want to do whatever God wants. And it's only through Jesus that you can get that revelation and that heart change. And, uh, and that's really what Jesus came to do. So much more than the law, he came to make men's hearts brand new, which the old law couldn't do. Amen. Couldn't have said it any better myself. Tell people where they can follow you. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube. Just search for my name, Shane Winnings, um, on Instagram at Shane.Winnings. And uh, I'm live on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, Friday night at 7.30 Central. So if they like the teaching and preaching, they can find more there. I know I do. Thanks, Thank man. You.